Okay, great to be back together again. Looks like we're in uh, the book of James. Super long. It's going to take a year or two to get through. <laughs> uh, we we already did a little uh, preamble for John for uh, James talking about who he is, who we think he is, who he might be, and why we did it that way, and then uh, moved into chapter one. And apparently, we're at verse seventeen of chapter one, uh, heading toward chapter two. So let's just pick up where we left off. Who would like to read? We're at 17. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, you know, hmm. I can read from there. Although mine has 16 and 17 put together, so you're going to get whatever it is. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Um, make no mistake about this, my dear brothers. It is all... It is all that is good, everything that is perfect, which is given us from above. It comes down from the Father of all light. With him, there is no such thing as alteration, no shadow of a change. By his own choice, he made us children by the message of the truth, so that we could should be a sort of first fruits of all that he had created. Remember this, my brothers, be quick to listen but slow to speak and slow to rouse your temper. God's righteousness is never served by man's anger. So do away with all the impurities and bad habits that are still left in you, accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. But you must do what the world word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. To listen to the word and not obey is like looking at your own features in a mirror and then after a quick look, going off and immediately forgetting what you looked like. But the man who looks steadily at the perfect law of freedom and makes that his habit, not listening and then forgetting, but actively putting it into practice, will be happy in all that he does. Nobody must imagine that he is religious while he still goes on deceiving himself and not keeping control over his tongue. Anyone who does this has the wrong idea of religion. Pure, unspoiled religion, in the eyes of God our Father, is this, coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it, and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the world. Yeehaw. So that's the end of one. Yep. Okay, so much in here. I mean, this whole... Um, this, yep. whole first this is so thick. Yeah, and this is probably one of the most quoted uh, sections of the book, sections of the New Testament uh, in in uh, popular readings and in movies and other places you see is that uh, slow to anger one, you know, that, that's very, very, I've seen on so many plaques, you can buy it up on Skyline Drive on all sorts of wood and burned in and all kind of stuff, so um Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the, the in, of the heavenly lights. Um, it does not change like shifting shadows. So, who wants to jump in? You know, I, about the, the slow to anger thing, that uh, it, it may be plastered all over the place, but, but I always get the feeling that uh, it, that people feel like they have to get angry in order to to tell other people that they care. Um, a lot of a lot of people I know seem to do that. They uh, they get angry and scream and yell just just to uh, and it seems like they're they're just having to they're just doing that not to satisfy themselves but to to uh, to convince the people other people that they care. That's how you play the role. Yeah. It's drama. Yeah. It's drama. It's kind of weird when you think about it because um, when you really care for somebody, that's enough drama. So if you've got to manufacture anger or or contention to show that you care, it's uh, suspect. Yeah. I mean, there are situations where you're genuinely afraid for a person and you, you feel like they don't understand the significance of the moment and so it's like hello hello to get their attention but sometimes that's just a lazy shortcut too yeah it's a but i think it's interesting it's like you don't glance at the right you need to stare at the mirror stare at the mirror of the law 
internalize the mirror of the law, spend time staring at the law. So it's part of you so that you can go forth doing what it says, not just look and say, yep, that's right, Asta. Um, look steady at the perfect law and makes that his habit. Yeah, this is a wonderful little, so in screw tape last night, chapter eight, screw tape is talking to Wormwood. Um, <clears throat> about focus. And in one place, he has this great line. Let's see if I can grab it real quick. What do you say? Um, can you talk a little louder? Sure. It's um I was looking at this, it just reminds me of screw tape last night. It's chapter eight where he's going into the law of undulation and what undulation means. And in the end here, he gets to this place. Where is this 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 line that Can't he, hear you? This line that he has is exactly what we're talking about. Basically, he says um that a basically just saying a moderated a moderated faith is better than no faith at all so he's saying if we and, and whatever we do we should we should encourage the patient to have a moderated faith to always be thinking about how the faith is applied or what faith means or how we get faith or what how we're going to get there because uh we that that person will spend so much time thinking about thinking about it that they won't actually live it so here james is saying in this thing about the mirror that there has to be a, a real honest process by which we are looking at ourselves that it's not you know i don't glance <laughs> myself and say well i'm a, i'm a faithful person i'm a faithful man i do faithful things i go to church on sunday and i give to the poor and i i cut my neighbor's lawn when it's too long and i say nice things to people and i open the door for somebody and all that means jack on a on a cracker that's <clears> not <throat> that's not about faith that's about me doing stuff you know now this is james is about doing stuff so that's fine but that doesn't mean jack on a cracker either if you don't have faith which is what paul's talking about in galatians we'll get to that in a few minutes so this whole thing about staring in the mirror is saying you've got to be honest with yourself that your good works that you're doing are your good works for your for, for and you may be doing that in the name of faith but is that faith and the answer is no it's the product of faith so now i have to realize that i have to go back and find out what my faith says that's producing this product and if what i'm what produces this product is just me being a nice guy that's that's not it i'm i'm lacking i have, I have not i have not known myself i have not known my my journey of faith is not I'm not aware of it. So I can't can't look in the mirror, glance in the mirror, and then I go away, don't know myself. I've got to get in deep and understand why I do it and what I do it for and who I do it for. And if I have any other remember, I I think we were in another class where we were talking about this, and I said John Wayne did a a a, a um back in the day, John Wayne did a a record album like so many people did. Star every star had to sing on an album. It's like one of the worst ones you'll ever hear is Burt Reynolds did an album. Oh my gosh. Um, but John Wayne did it, and rightly so, he didn't sing. He 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 spoke it. And one of the ones that I'll never forget was great. He talked about being a hyphenated American. He said, why are, why do we do this to ourselves? Uh, I'm an Irish American, an Italian American, a German American, a British American. He said, what you're just saying is you're a hyphenated American. How about just saying you're an American? How about being proud of your past and knowing who you are, but, but all of us getting together and being one? So that's great sentiment. Um, and it's not, it's not far from what we're talking about here. That is it, is my faith, is my Christianity hyphenated? Is it the, is it the reasons why I am, or I'm ardent about my faith because of the things that I care about? So I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm an echo Christian, right? An eco Christian, or I'm a, I'm a, a quality Christian, Christian, or I'm, <laughs> I, I'm beating the band and beating the drums for something. And the Christianity really just supplies me with a lot of strength to do that. So it becomes the, the it becomes the uh, the definition that of my Christianity. You know how does the, how do I live that? So we have to know have to know ourselves. Uh, can't look in the mirror and not realize who we are. Have to get really really deep. Uh, it's very superficial. Yeah. Just looking in the mirror. Yeah. That's not going past like just going to church and then leaving and throwing it, leaving it all behind. Yeah. 
And James, his message is demonstrate and live your faith. Mm -hmm. So much of it is about serving others and good works, practicing it. So also where it, it, in the beginning of what we read, it talks about when it's what's written in your heart. Yep. Where is that? 23? Is that the way you're talking? Yes. No. No? Hold on a second. Oh, it's 21. Therefore, put away all filth and evil excess oh. and humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you Amen. and is able to save your souls. So yes. before Jesus came, when things were based on the Old Testament, that line wouldn't have been said. This is after Jesus came and sent the Holy Spirit. And that is the word written on the heart of people, each human. So in looking in the mirror, you can see yourself. The law of freedom, the law that perseveres, is that God's law that's written in your heart. You don't have to be all tangled up in all those thousands of laws that were created then in the Old Testament to try and control people's behaviors. But go and look in the mirror and deep within and see if you are listening to that law that is written in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. This so twenty one takes starts that deep dive, you know get get rid of before that what is it uh, yeah it's twenty one so anger doesn't do it and then it goes in saying you have to get rid of this stuff here's the stuff you have to get rid of get rid of this get rid of that get rid of the, get rid of the other thing and then humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you and then so now we're diving in he goes into this uh, thing says don't deceive yourselves and then he starts going about the mirror right. Um, don't listen to the word, but do and not do what it says. A man looks in the mirror. So now he's saying, don't be on the surface. Do that dive in there. Same thing. Um, the perfect law that gives freedom. Okay, it keeps going. At 26, if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself. And this is a great line. His religion is worthless. Not dented. <laughs> not in the repair shop. Worthless. Um, that is a pretty strong thing. So what is James, how can James say that? How can he just come out? And I mean, this is a huge line. Anyone who considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. This, this line tip, uh, tips the hat to the depth of James's writing. James, like the mirror, like the, like the heart, the 21 verse 21 that sue pointed out james is not just on the surface of what we're doing james is going way down in deep and saying that the words that you're reading the life that you're living the the the, the dependency that you have on christ the devotion that you have to god all these things have to be so deeply rooted so deeply abiding so powerfully a part of what you are that they are the 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 uh, the center which motivates you to move outward. If you don't find that center in you, if that's not there, then it's all make believe, and you can get a little nut, a nice little kernel here. But that little nut that you've got, my my little nut of faith, right? This little nut, there it is. But from my little nut of faith, I can grow all kinds of stuff. The stuff that I want. The stuff that I like, I can fashion my life around that. Where I can't do that when I've got this core of Christ, because he gives me no latitude. His directions to me are absolute. And the world won't corrupt you. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of young people are saying there's no point in going to church because you don't do anything different from anybody else. You say nice things, that's great. You say nicer things than a lot of other people, but if you're not doing anything differently from anybody else, I can just say those nice things to myself somewhere else. And in fact, you know, many kids are substituting their own spiritual whatever and then um, philanthropic activities as their expression of 
you know, and we wonder where they are from the church and the answer is, well, there's nothing here they can contribute to. Um, and I, it kind of makes me sad, but, you know, I, I, I can't fix it. So, you know, the, the, the bigger problem there is that there's no depth. So the, the, they're coming, people come to church and say, I want to do something. I want to go to a soup kitchen. I, I want to, I want to, oh. you know, make a blanket. I want to go out and dig somebody's well. I want to do this stuff. Well, that's all great. But that's exactly what James is saying. If it's not, if it's, if I'm doing that for me, then the moment that that stops, I'll go someplace else because I'm only there to dig the well and make the blanket and paint the wall and help somebody out. It's I'm not there because of the depth of this, this transformative faith that's in me. So I don't, I don't, I don't stay there. You know, that's what I'm saying. I, and youth, the youth of today don't have that guidance there. They don't have that, uh, that people in their lives that are directing them toward this place of absolute understanding or dependence on God. So it becomes a, a life of acts and working and doing something different to make me happy. Now there's a place for that, right? I like it. We know we do this with our youth when they're coming up. We, we go on mission trips and we do things to help them. But the, the mission trips, if they are bereft of the contact with the spirit and the focus on Christ and the depth of the instruction by God, if they're not connected one to one, then they are worthless. They're just, a, they're just an outing for the youth group. I went on so many outings for the you youth group where we went to do something great for people, sad. but there was no connection to the faith. Mm -hmm. So everybody came, all the youth came back with great stories about how they did stuff. But they were no better understanding of who Jesus was or what salvation was or redemption is or my connection to Christ or my connection to the Holy Spirit. So now what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for the next mission trip because it was so much fun. And this, again, is exactly what Paul's talking about. There has to be a depth that goes beyond this, this level and gets way down because at this level, nothing can shake this. This stands on its own. But it's also the place, you know, when we get down to your get down to the core of your faith this way, is the place where it starts to be uncomfortable. You know, you start to hit those places where Jesus is telling you to do things or not do things that starts to get pretty hard. I and think one of the hardest things to do is to is to watch to not say things. Like it says here to hold your tongue, watch your tongue or whatever. That's the that's one of the hardest, hardest things. And it, it bumps right up against an ego of, yeah. but, but me, but I, but that's not right. And so if a person can learn how to be quiet and listen more, which is exactly what's said in the beginning of this, that's the start of, of really that humility and, and listening to the spirit within Yep. This is why this the last uh, the last uh, verse twenty seven is this um, deceptively 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 complicated. It looks so simple, right? It says religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this: what to look after orphans and widows and those stressed and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Ta da! <laughs> simple, right? Go give to orphans and go give to the widows and and uh, stay away from nasty stuff in the world and you're all set. But this this 27 is the is the anchor verse for everything that came before it. So when it says re religion um, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows. But why are you doing it? Is the question. Not just going down the street because there's a or there's a widow down there and I need to I I'm gonna pressure wash her driveway and mow her lawn and help her out because she hasn't got anybody to help her. That's great. That's wonderful and it can be really helpful and it could be a witness to the Christian faith that I'm doing it. But but I have to go inside and find out why I'm doing it and if I'm doing it because I need because this woman needs help. That's a it's a great thing she needs help but that shouldn't be why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it because this woman needs help. I'm doing this because Christ tells me because I go to God first to find out what can I do? What do I, how do I behave? What is my next step? My next step is I help the woman. 
I, my, my, my step is not, I want to help the woman. It's I've got to go to Christ first. So the, to the, the implied thing here is the religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless, pure and faultless is the direct connection to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's pure and faultless. And because of that, I help the widow and the orphan and stay pure from the world. And there's nothing else. So this is going to the, the motivation, what's inside. And and it's very it's very difficult to look at that place. It really is. Most people don't want to do it. It's a um it's a challenge that's can be very unpleasant. Oh, we're off to a good start. Okay. <laughs> who wants we keep going? Let's see what time it is. Yes, we got plenty of time. So who wants to read? We'll read two. Um, let's see. Let's read up to verse. We'll read to 13. Stop at the end of 13. Who would like to read? Hey, uh, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the Lord of glory, with partiality. Or if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, you sit here in the good place, and say to the poor man, you stand there or sit at my footstool. Have, have, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? But if you have dishonored the poor man, do not rich. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not bless, blaspheme that normal noble name by which you are called? If you if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you commit adultery, but you do not, but you do murder, if you do not commit adultery and you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy tr triumphs over judgment. Okay. The right. merciful need have no fear of judgment. Ah. All right. Who wants to jump in? Well, kind of, this kind of the, the absoluteness of this kind of bothers me. Mm -hmm. Because um, you have, it, it's basically it says, if you keep the whole law and stumble in one point of the law, well, uh, you're guilty of all of it, right? Yep. Or you're no, no, nobody gets it all right. No, no, nobody has gotten every everything right. So, some somebody stumbles somewhere. Does that does that mean that they're uh, they're 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 guilty, and there's no point in, in following any of it? No, what no, the, no, no, no. What James is talking about. So, if I I'm uh, I'm trying to follow the law. I'm trying to follow Christ. I'm trying to follow God. I'm, I've got um, that's you know, in my heart, and I'm moving forward that way. And while I'm trying to do this over here, I, I goof over here and I don't do it. So that's not really what he's talking about. What he's saying is that I'm doing so much right over here that it doesn't matter if I have a little something on the side. You know, and 99% of my life, I'm right, I'm right on track. But because I'm right on track on 99% or 92% of my life, then I can have this little indulgence over here. It's okay. Well, that, I, I I don't read it that way. I, I don't read it as you giving give him giving you a pass for uh or for the that other one percent. But what I'm what it's, I'm saying is you you uh you have all this right. You're doing you're doing the best you can. Um, so you screw up a little bit on on this on this one point. That doesn't that doesn't mean you're on the wrong track. It doesn't mean you're guilty of everything. No, it, what, it, you, but this, what he's saying. No matter what you're guilty of, you're you're out of whack with the law. Yeah. 
Yeah. When, um, when oh, you don't, it, it, it's not, that's not, not to say that you get a pass uh, right. for that other 1%. You, no, no, you that, don't. That's, you, that's not what I was saying, Steve. What I was saying is that's what this is addressing. This is saying to the person, if you break this one part of the law, you're guilty for all of it. So who's doing that? It's the person that says, I'm doing so much right. I deserve this little acquiesce to the right. I can just do this because I'm doing all this. It's like, I can take a break because I've worked so hard and I allow myself this indulgence. And James is saying, you can't do that. You can't work really hard over here and then give yourself off this. Because if you break the law this way, if you break this one place in the law, you're guilty of breaking it all because you're not taking it at all seriously. Mm. You're the one who's de who's deciding that you can break the law because you you do the law so much over here. You can it's like speeding. I don't break the law anywhere else. I don't I don't you know jaywalk. I don't steal. I don't do anything I shouldn't do. But you know so so I go eight miles over the speed limit. That's okay. I mean why not? I'm a good guy, right? No, that's wrong. It, you go eight oh. miles over the speed limit. You've broken the law. So you can't say I obey the law. I'm a good law abiding person. I'm not. Because I and I don't have the liberty to say I can go eight miles over the speed limit. Who am I hurting? I'm not. I'm a good guy. Otherwise, I'm not hurting anybody. James no, is saying, then nobody. Then nobody's law abiding because no, nobody no, no. gets it all wrong. No, no, no. That's, this is why, that's why we would need Christ, though. With the earlier verse, it said, "Religion is not religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father." Is this? And then it talked about care of the orphans and the widows. So religion that is pure and undefiled is is like if you if you look at it as being like a white robe, right? So the white robe is pure and undefiled. But if you spill a, and you stain, uh, you know, and there's a stain on the white robe, whether it's a small stain or a large stain, it's now not a pure undefiled robe anymore it's it needs to be purified and cleansed and we have christ to do that but whether it's a small stain or a large stain it's still a stain that is not it's not the robe that can be used anymore in that holy service of god it's been stained yes yeah, steve it's the it's the difference of saying i'm trying to do everything right and i've screwed up that's okay. Everybody screws up. So I'm trying to do everything right. And I screwed up. So will you forgive me? And God says, yes, I forgive you because you can't be right. hundred percent of the time you're going to screw up. That is not what he's saying here. What he's saying here is exactly what I said. I'm doing everything right. And because I'm working so hard to do everything right, I can allow myself to do something over here. That's not right because I'm doing so much right over here. I get an allowance. I get a pass on doing this. It's not, I did it by mistake. It's I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah. I have decided I can do this because I'm doing all the rest of this. Yeah. I've decided I can speed on the freeway because I don't break any other law. But in reality, I can't claim to be a law-abiding citizen because I decide to break the law and speed on the freeway. There's no excuse for that. I can't, I can't give myself a pass. The law doesn't care that I'm obeying the law everywhere else. The only thing that the that what's happening is that the sheriff's not not uh, enforcing it, but it's still breaking the law. So James is saying. I think you we've gone down a rabbit hole. No, no. The point of this thing is not that one thing or another is all part of the law and the law, and you're all screwed up, but rather the full embodiment of the law is to treat everything everybody well just as christ did the full embodiment of the law is to take care of the orphans and widows to clean up the shabby and pathetic to usher in the shabby and pathetic because nobody else is ushering them in the rich guys will make it in they always do but you know it's the shabby and pathetic who are sitting outside knowing that they aren't good enough. Those are the people that, in fact, if we don't want to redeem souls, they're the ones that we go after, not the guys who've got it together. It's it's these guys, and it's taking care of the pathetic ones is the merciful need no no fear of judgment. We don't. That's what I think. I think he's addressing the addressing the Jews of his time. 
is, is one of his is part of his audience. Yeah. His right. fellow arguably, Jews. Arguably it's the whole audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jews who I'm are not, trying I'm to follow you, Jake. Right? I'm not he's following talking, you, Jake. Talking about the law and, and the, the Jews of that time <clears throat> would, you know, take the best seats at the feast and pray out loud, praying out in the streets and everything. But then they would break the law somewhere else. Maybe not. Right. So They're doing, the, doing the boring kind of icky things. No, no, no. I'm going to go, you know, walk down the middle of the street and shout my prayers and throw money around. Yes. Uh, I don't want to do the right thing at home. Yeah. Who sees that? So, well, just let's let's put this one section to bed, Steve. I guess the place you could find this is the very next line. It's it's um, verse um, eleven. It explains what came before it. Uh, For he who said, "Do not commit adultery," but also said, "Do not murder." If you do not commit if you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. So, just because you didn't, you, just because you kept one part of the law. It doesn't mean you can break another part of the law and have it be okay. Right. It's a it's a it's a basket deal. But it's Amen. not because you did it by mistake. It's because you did it on purpose. So when he's saying here, what what Carol Lee's saying and what Jay is saying, if if I if I do everything right in the church, if I'm serving God and glory God and God, 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 and then I discriminate against the poor person that comes in the door, all of my worship is worthless. Because it the what is supposed to point me to help this guy is what I'm doing over here. So if I'm doing all this over here and then I don't help this guy, I haven't got it. I'm just You're going a lawbreaker. Through. Yeah. I'm just I'm just doing it because everybody else is doing it. So he's saying you can't you can't come over here and claim to be the law. You, you just leave we're just using the word law. You can't come over here and claim to be the guy that, that keeps the law if then you go over there and you discriminate against this person. You're betraying yourself. You're showing that you're not really the person that you're claiming to be. You're looking in the mirror and walking away and not seeing yourself. Okay. Gotcha. Speak and act those speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom because judgment without mercy can be shown to anyone who has been merciful without the merciful mercy is judgment. It's a great line. We should finish the rest of this chapter because oh, yeah. it does sort of pull it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. What All time right. is it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Who would like to read 14 to the end? I will. Okay. Although I feel like I'm hogging, but uh, oh well, there you <laughs> go. Take the case, my brothers, of someone who has never done a single good act, but claims that he has faith. Will that faith save him? If one of the brothers or one of the sisters in, is in need of clothes and has not enough food to live on, and one of you says to them, I wish you well, keep yourself warm and eat plenty without giving them these bare necessities of life, then what good is that? Faith is like that. If good works do not go with it, it is quite dead. This is the way to talk to, to people of that kind. You say you have faith, and I have good deeds. I will prove to you that I have faith by showing you my good deeds. Now you prove to me that you have faith without any good deeds to show. You believe in the one God. That is credible enough. But the demons have the same belief, and they tremble with fear. Do you do realize, you senseless man, that faith without good deeds is useless? You surely know that Abraham, our father, was justified by his deed because he offered his son Isaac on the altar. There you see it, see it. Faith and deeds were working together. His faith became perfect by what he did. This is what scripture really means when it says Abraham put his faith in God and this was counted as making him justified. And that is why he was called the friend of God. You see now that it is by doing something good and not only believing that a man is justified. There's another example of the same kind. Rahab the prostitute justified her deed by her deeds because she welcomed the messengers and showed them a different way to leave. 
A body dies when it is separated from the spirit, and in the same way, faith is dead if it is separated from good deeds. So we're at that. You believe in the one God. That's credible enough. The demons believe it too, uh, and they tremble. Yeah, that's not saying anything. A demon believes in this is this this is the heart of of the objection from Martin Luther about the letter of James. He hated the letter of James. He hated it because of this one thing. Faith without works is dead. Mm. He said, no, 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 no. Because you go to Paul in, in Galatians and nowhere where he said, we, we're saved by faith alone. Mm. So people come away. That's, that's true. Faith. You are saved by faith. Yep. And that, I don't think that's a thing we, I see so many people who get kind of stuck on that. Your salvation is not James isn't saying you're going to hell. He's saying you're breaking the law. And I don't think your salvation is at stake with this faith versus works thing. Your faith saves you. But then, you know, if you're going to show anybody, if you're going to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, you can't, you got to do it. <clears throat> You got to do it. That's well, if, if you have true faith, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. If exactly. it's real, if it's real, you're going to want to, and you're going to do it. And if you have, if your faith is such, and you're doing this, you know, stare at the law to see the perfect way. The perfect way to be is moving and going and and doing. Not, you know, who was it, narcissist? Who was the guy who stared at his face in the pool and Narciss fell in? Narcissus. 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 Yeah. So you just hit, <laughs> you just hit on the on the mark that so many, and I I can't believe that Martin Luther didn't get this, because who is Paul writing to when Paul says uh, you're saved by faith alone? Who's, Who's he James? talking to? He's Jews. 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 And and Gentiles who are converting. Yes, the converted Jews. Right. right so right. you've got you've got Greeks who are sacrificing to to gods on altars, and you've got the Jews who are trying to work their way into heaven by doing all these you know nitpicky law things. And Paul, but saying, he's also <laughs> answering the Catholic Church's "By your way into heaven." Well. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, and it's then, so, around, you know, right? he has to scream no it isn't buying your way it's just your you know your faith is what saves you it's not giving up your food money for some some gold coin for Rome. interestingly enough the argument for for um indulgences and the like is is based on james right Right. So Paul, right. Paul is saying to the convert that's been sacrificing on a foreign altar, that's not going to save you. And and sacrificing sheep and goats at the altar in the synagogue or in the temple is not going to save you. And following the 617 laws is not going to save you. You are saved by faith alone, faith in Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord and Savior. That's it. That's all there is. But James is talking to people who've already got that. Right. They already right. know that. He's talking to the next level of the church. Paul's talking to the not church yet, faith alone. James is talking to the already church. What do I do? So they're already, they already know faith is the only thing that does it. He's just saying, okay, you're saved by your faith, but your faith is proved by your works. So the two go together. And what who just said that? Uh, Sharon, that's what you want to do. If you know, if this is what the way you are, then you want to do this. It's not that you have to fight to do it. This is what you want to do. So he's obviously contending against people who say, I have faith, but don't want to do anything. They just want to sit back and say, oh, I've got faith. You know, you know me, I'm a faithful person. And he's saying, nope, nope, doesn't work. Well, you know, I, I, I sometimes think about how Christianity like took over the world in no time flat right then. And I think part of it was you didn't have to do any of the icky things. You didn't have to have it with a, a, a 
temple prostitute. You didn't have to kill an animal. You didn't have to pay money to some disgusting God. You didn't have to do any of that. And so I think that the people who, who are escaping from that yucky bit, they come into Christianity and they say, oh, oh, I can just sit here. No temple prostitutes, no sacrificed animals, no. And James is saying, um, P.S., that's true, except now you got to get up. And, and, you know, and, and there is something to be done as a Christian. Right. You're not doing it to appease the God, but you're doing it because this, this thing that God has given you is so stinking wonderful. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you're going to want to be like God and, and help this guy and help that guy. And you're going to want to do that because you want him to have that same salvation mm -hmm. thing escape the prostitutes and the dead animals and the whatever that you have right um i think so much of the stuff is like if you know what they're they're talking against mm -hmm. it, it makes all the difference absolutely changes your heart yes and you also don't want to exclude the poor people and <laughs> treat them badly right yeah and that's what the mirror is about right so, so I am uh, he's talking to somebody who says, I don't do this, but he, what he's, he's saying to you, you've got to ask yourself, why? Why am I not doing it? Or why am I doing it? And if I'm being honest with myself down here, I'm going to find that this probably has nothing to do with God or my faith. This is all about what I want to do or I don't want to do. So how do I, how do I, how do I, match that up to my devotion to my faith well i there's no way to find that out until i look in the mirror and i study myself and i understand why i'm doing it or why i'm not doing it now i take it on the hard process of saying okay this is obviously a place in my faith where i am weak and missing and and i haven't got it so this is where i need to build this is where i need to turn to god and ask for and it's going to get to prayer and all of it this is where I'm going to I'm going to go to God in prayer and say, I need I need your help here because I'm obviously I found a big hole in me. And I thought I was I thought it was all that and more and I'm not. And now I know I'm not. So now I need to fix that or you need to fix it in me and I need to be your participant in it. So he's he's really trying to break down, as Carolee is saying, this idea that's been brought to the faith from other places. And has become has has become an allowance to do to do well do nothing, to be lethargic, and and James is saying okay look inside and find out why you're acting this way. You're, what you're going to find out is because what Carolee said, <laughs> you're going to find out because you came from that other place and right here you're going oh I don't have to do anything, that's really great over there I had to do a lot and now I don't have to do it. This is great I like this, but that's not your faith, that's you. So you've got to show that you've got to find your faith in you that motivates you to do the next thing, which is working out your faith. As, as Carolee said, Jesus said, will you work out your faith with fear and trembling? What the heck does that mean? That means I've got to do the work. I've got to participate in this. I have got to look in me and know who I am and clean myself up. Well, I turn to God and say, can you clean me up? And I'm going to help. I'm going to be invested and I'm going to be dedicated to that. Fear and trembling. Oh my gosh. Who wants to look inside themselves and find the black hole, the nasty place, the dark closet, the place we hide stuff and open that door. We know it's in there. We already know it's in there, but we don't want to, we don't want to go. We don't even want to think about going looking, let alone open the door. But that's exactly what Jesus tells us. We have to do what Paul is saying when he says faith alone and what James is saying. Now you've got to work this thing out. It's got to be more than just, I believe it's got to be, if you oh, how was it oh yeah jesus talking my favorite story jesus talking to the woman at the well she's talking about how these guys say i gotta do that and these guys say i gotta do the other thing and you know i'm really tired of these guys telling me where to go um and he says someday god will be in you mm -hmm. 
And you, you won't be doing any of anything for those guys. You will be doing it for God. And I think that's what this is. It's like, you're not doing it for the Jewish God who wants animal sacrifices. You're not doing it for the Greek God. You're doing it for God, right. because you know, through God, with him and in him and the, 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 that whole deal. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um. And you know, you're on some level, you don't change what you do. It's just the whole motivation and mm -hmm. and sort of focus and system changes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not change what you do, just why you're doing it. And you have to be honest to find that out. Okay. Well, in chapter one, it said to keep asking God for wisdom. Yes. And believing God, believing yes. the answer you get. People, so yeah. if, you do, if you keep doing it, you um, it'll get easier. <laughs> yes. People, have, if you read about a lot of the, um, what is the uh, uh, little little summary of James? A lot of times they talk. The summary talks about um, the action that the that James is talking about the action of our faith. That's the main point of James. That's not the main point of James. The action of our faith is the is the action of our faith. James, from the very beginning, asking for wisdom and all the way through it, is asking us to look inside and find our faith. Because if you find your faith, you have the action. You've got to find the faith first. And then it acts out. So if I'm not acting out, I got a bigger, I got a bigger fish to fry. Dang, guys. All right, one and two, and that was a that was a that was a hoot. Thank you. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> I um, look forward to us. We're going through three. We'll see if we can get through three, maybe four. Three is a short one for um, next week. I'm not sure. Let me have five to attend with. So it'll be great. It's next no week. Oh yeah, we'll do it next week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. God Thank bless you, you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Have a peaceful sleep. And go to go to bed thinking about all those great works to do. <laughs> all right. God bless you all. See you later. Bye. Thanks for everybody.